Hey guys, thanks for supporting the generic tech support channel. This is Tech Guy one Just wanted to thank you guys all for making this channel great. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Hey guys, welcome back. So, our last video that we did, we did a video on our O&O Shut Up 10 application. And there, there's been a variety of comments indicating that I may not have run that correctly. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't really give me too much as far as information here as far as how this actually applies. So according to this, it's all applied. It indicates that there's been accepted. Okay, so accept changes. I assume that means everything's still disabled. I don't see anything in here that has been re-enabled. Everything really looks about the same as it's been. I want to create a restore point. So, there we go. According to this, it's been applied. Now, I know that there's been some comments, and the comments indicated that I may not have run this correctly, and that I may have to shut it before I can actually run it, um, or before they actually apply, which I have absolutely no problem with doing that again. So basically what this video is, is we're gonna test this. So we've done the video already where this was running in the background. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna close it and I'm gonna do another scan with our Nessus to see if there's any difference at all between when this is open and when this is closed. Uh, the concern is again, I, I don't want to give false information here, right? So I do the best I can to provide um, correct information. And if this, has to be closed in order for it to actually apply, which I don't think it does, but if, if people are questioning as to whether or not that's the case, I would rather clarify that by closing the application and then running the scan while the application is closed to see if it makes any difference whatsoever. Um, again, I, I have nothing against ONO software. I, I, I've used them for the past 24 years, and I really do think that they're phenomenal software company. They really do make a, a lot of very good applications, it's just, I don't think, the well, at least in a clarified state, I don't think this actually does anything from a security perspective. All I think it does is it shuts off the annoyance of the pop-ups on the screen, but as far as the connection from Microsoft to the desktop, I don't see the severance of that connection. It still appears to be connected to the desktop. It just doesn't show you the connection in the, in the actual operating system. So it doesn't give you as much noise that you have to visually uh, process while you're using the operating system but all the noise is still there in the back end now again wholeheartedly hope this actually does make a difference so what we're going to do is we're going to close this application and when we do that we get a pop-up here that says many thanks for using ono shut up 10 please note settings may possibly revert to their previous status following windows updates after updates run on ono shut up 10 plus plus a new and you'll see the changes that you can then reset automatically. So what that means is that it doesn't appear to make a difference whether or not the application's opened or closed, um, that it applies the, the settings anyway. But now that the application is closed, let's scan the system with the Nessus and see if there's any difference. Okay guys, so Windows 10 Vanilla Edition 22H2, this is from April 23rd after Patch Tuesday specifically scanned on april 25th so it had all the patches for april 23rd on it 27 infos one medium one high this one however is for our vanilla o and o this was ran today april 29th 8 a.m 809 click on that 27 infos one medium one high which means that whether or not o and o startup is turned on or off it doesn't make any difference that shut up application doesn't actually shut anything up outside of just the GUI. So I'm not gonna go through every single one of these things, but I figure for the sake of this video, maybe what we could do next is we could take a look at specifically disabling and resetting the advertising ID and info. We have it turned on right now. Now, again, in the comments, people had meant to mention that if I turn on only recommended things, it would just turn on the things that have green. If I apply all settings, it applies green and red and yellow. So right now, for the sake of what this is, it is turned on and set to apply the disable and reset the advertising ID, um, regardless of whether or not what I clicked in the actual actions menu, that should be set. 
So now that we have that set, we know that it's turned on to disable that stuff. Let's take a look at the registry configuration and see if it's actually turned it off. Or rather on, I guess, right? So let's see if it's disabled our advertising. That's better. Okay, guys, so it appears that we do have our disable and reset advertising ID turned on or basically shut this crap off. Basically, it's enabled to disable it in the registry. However, when I jump in the registry, while we do have some of our stuff disabled, so from here to here, specifically, this is our su subscribe content or our content delivery for AdSense in Windows 10. Zero means that it's turned off. So it's disabled for the ad stuff. However, the content delivery is allowed. So it... The O&O application appears to disable the listeners in the OS, but the OS itself is set to listen for the content delivery. So the connection to the Hive is still active. However, the operating system is not providing information. But that doesn't really solve the security feature, and that's likely why we don't see the difference in our configuration in our O&O application when we run our Nessus scan. Because the connection to the outside TCP connection, not the UDP broadcast, but the TCP connection for the keep alive for the connection back to the hive is set to enabled. So this application does work, all right? It does work because what it does is it does disable the advertising ID and info on the inside of the operating system so you don't see it. But on the outside, the connection to the hive the connection that allows Microsoft to actually gra grab and gather this detail is still open and connected. So part of this is probably because this content delivery allowed is not only for your ad sense and your ad revenue and your ad configuration in Windows 10 and 11, but it also is required if you wanna use the Microsoft Store. So if you have the Store application, like for instance, on this particular machine, we have Edge installed and Edge, I believe, still updates through Store regardless of whether or not you have a Microsoft account. So if you disable this, likely Edge won't update, the store would not work, and that would break those two functions of the operator. Now for me, I don't care because I don't use the store, and as far as Edge is concerned, I could care less whether or not it's here or there. It doesn't make any difference to me. It's so annoying to use that I would never use it, but it does exist. Basically what Microsoft did is they took Chromium, which was a fantastic product, added a whole bunch of their adware and bloat to it and ruined it, and that's Microsoft Edge. So between the store, Edge, and I believe the built-in mail application, in order for you to use them, you need the content delivery allowed enabled. So if we disable this and we ran the scan, we should see one less info on our configuration or one less medium or one less high, depending on what our configuration is set for. But there would probably be more things that we would have to go through because once we disabled that, we would have to then get rid of Edge the store, and the Microsoft Mail app. So chances are what I'm saying here is I believe your best bet is if you want to use this O&O application, run it on a pre-built system. Like if you're going to run it on like um, the X Lite or the Ghost Windows 10 version and you run this O&O application, since that crap doesn't exist on the back end but the front end still has the garbage turned on, if you run this, it'll disable the front end stuff and you won't get the annoyance of it. Um, but it doesn't exist on the back end of those systems to begin with, so this wouldn't break anything, wouldn't cause any issues. It would just clean up the operating system and probably give you the peace of mind of adding things to it or rather removing things from it that would give it, you know, more of a, a streamlined approach or streamlined look. But as far as what it does in this particular operating system in a vanilla version of Windows 10 is absolutely nothing. All it does is it changes the GUI. So if you don't want to see these things, it's perfectly okay to go in here and do this. But all these things really do is they make changes in your settings configuration. They just do it in a centralized location. So by all means, go for it. It makes no difference whether or not you run it or not from a security standpoint. It doesn't change any of the security configurations. And as we can see, Microsoft Windows 10 on this particular machine after running this application is still connected back to the Hive. So it makes no difference from a security configuration either. So I figure one more place we can check on this particular operating system is specifically our advertising info. So for those that are curious, it's HKEY Current User Software Microsoft Windows Current Version Advertising Info. 
you see a key that says enabled. One is enabled, zero is disabled. So we can see that our advertising info is disabled in this particular operating system. That's also controlled by this change that we would take here, this disable or reset advertising ID and info. That's the info portion versus the ID portion. Now, keep in mind, again, since we've disabled all this stuff on the back end, it's really not fully disabled because we have the other key turned on. And it's important to just notate this because again, I'm not downplaying the software because it does do something, but it doesn't close the door. It basically gives you the ability to close the door but not lock it. So you're still allowing connections, still allowing people in, but you're only allowing people in that have the key. So if they have the key to the operating system, they can get in. If they don't have the key to the operating system, they can't get in. But unfortunately, Microsoft has keyed all of these operating systems so they could get in. So in the event that you're trying to lock Microsoft out completely, this is not the application to use. However, if you just want Windows to be less annoying with all the pop-ups and the annoyances in the operating system, you don't really care that they have a constant connection to your OS, this is a perfect application to use. So I would say at this point, it's up to your discretion. I don't think that there's anything wrong with using this because again, it's a centralized location to shut all this crap off. Um, versus going through every single menu inside of the settings configuration area. And that's really annoying. There's an enormous amount of settings in there, obviously, as we could see from this list here. There's just, there's a tremendous amount of them. And quite frankly, having it in a centralized location is really helpful. But from a security standpoint, it really doesn't do anything. It's not making your OS more secure. It's not stopping the ability of your data being uh, accessed by Microsoft. If anything, all it's really doing is it's stopping your ability to see in a pop-up form what is being accessed by Microsoft or other ad revenue uh, streams. So what do you guys think? Is this something that you would still use? I, I would tell you to use it. I think it's awesome. I really do. I, I, don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with necessarily using it. It's just, it's not necessarily what they claim it is. It's not offering any additional security. It's really just offering the ability for you to shut off crap that you don't want to watch or you don't want to look at in the operating system. So for that sake, I really do think this is a good application. But it's not a security application. So it's just something to keep in mind when you use it that it, it doesn't necessarily do specifically what they say it does. It really, what it does is just from a GUI perspective, stop the annoyances from occurring. Um, from a performance aspect, turning all that junk off, I really don't think that we're gonna see anything performance-wise, one versus the other. And quite frankly, we don't. The operating system's just as noisy as it's always been. Um, we have three cores on this particular system, eight gigs of memory. It's just as noisy. So I don't see any performance increase with running it, but Again, it's less annoying. I don't have the crap down here at the bottom. I don't have a whole bunch of junk in here, changing, starting, closing, and all that other stuff. Now, keep in mind, the, the live tiles and everything in your start menu, while the O&O application indicates that it turns them off, it doesn't actually stop the service. For instance, it's currently running the start menu experience host. It's PID 5352. It's using 17 megs of memory. That's currently running. And... As such, we're currently using um, our configuration. So basically, when this runs, it allows the live tile junk down here to take place and exist. So even though the application, this o, &O application, changed the registry keys to not allow the connection, it doesn't stop the service from running. So we're not actually gaining any performance in doing that. You'd be better off killing the service from running so that way you turn off the live tiles at the source versus turning off the GUI switch that gives you the ability to see it. So anyway, I hope this clarifies what this actually does and what this actually does not do. And hopefully you guys found this interesting as a follow-up to our last O&O &O configuration um, video. If anybody else has any additional tests that they want me to run with this O&O software, please leave them in the comments. I'll gladly do it. If you still think that I didn't do it right, please let me know specifically what you want start to finish as far as running the scans and, and showing the changes. I'll gladly do that. There's not really too much information that I found on the internet as far as like specifically what this application actually secures versus um, just changing the GUI. So I only can go on what they have on their website based off of what they say. 
it's supposed to secure the operating system from ad traffic and other things but um, quite frankly I don't see that so again leave a comment down below and just let me know what you guys think if you guys have additional software you want me to test definitely let me know I did see a couple comments in the last video on software uh, for testing purposes we could definitely test the other so security software as well to see if we got anything in there um, hopefully you guys are enjoying this series thanks so much for watching take it easy